Good morning. Um, we will get started with our business meeting and Denise, will you please call the roll? Patrick McPherson. Present. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maureen Nichols. Present. Patricia Tim. Molly O'Halloran. Present. John Witzel. Here. Glenn Flint. Here. Lily Larson. Present. Rachel Wise. Here. Commissioner Bloomstead. Present. Seven present, one absent. Will you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Information regarding the Open Meetings Act is posted on the east wall of this room on the south side of the door. Live web streaming will be available through the State Board of Education website, www.education.ne.gov slash state board. Board members, please remember to engage your microphones uh, before speaking and turn them off when you are finished. And please turn off personal cell phones. Thank you. Our first item is uh, approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the January 7th and 8th meeting? I approve the approval of the January 7th, 8th meeting. I second. So we have a motion and a second. Denise, please call the roll. <clears throat> Rachel Wise. Yes. Lily Larson. Yes. Glenn Flint. Yes. John Witzel. Yes. Molly O'Halloran. Yes. Patrick McPherson. Yes. Maureen Nichols. Yes. And Patricia Tim. Seven yes, one absent. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the January 25th, 2016 State Board of Education Legislative Retreat? I'll move that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say it. Is there a I second. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we have a motion in a second. Remember our news. <laughs> Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes, Maureen seconded. Any, mo any questions or hearing none? Denise, please call the roll. Molly O'Halloran. Yes. John Witzel. Yes. Glenn Flint. Yes. Lily Larson. Yes. Rachel Wise. Yes. Patrick McPherson. Yes. Maureen Nichols. Yes. Patricia Tim. Seven yes, one absent. All right, moving on to the approval of the agenda. Commissioner, are there any recommended changes for today's agenda? Um, with Margaret Gunn, I don't believe there were any, but I just want to double check with you. Did anyone have a consent agenda? Okay, so I don't have any changes for the agenda. All right. Is there a motion to approve today's agenda? I move to the to approve the agenda as presented. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments, discussion? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. John Witzel? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. <clears throat> Molly O'Halloran? Yes. Maureen Nichol? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Patricia Tim? Seven yes, one absent. We'll now move into our public comment period. Um, thanks to the members of the public who are here in attendance today. Um, we had no requests for special appearances for today, so we will just move into our regular public comment period. Um, and again, um, sign in if you want to speak. We have one person who has done so, Jay Sears. Good morning, and Good you'll morning. be given five minutes. Hopefully I won't use all those. Good morning, for the record, I'm Jay Sears, and I represent the members of the Nebraska State Education Association. And I'm here before you today to uh, ask you to uh, approve uh, Action item 7.11 and 7.12, which are Rule 24 uh, regulations and the guidelines. And the reason I come before you today uh, to ask you to support those is, one, I missed the hearing probably the first time in 20 years that I haven't been at a department hearing, and I understand from Sharon that they didn't know what to do with no one there to speak. and but. Y'all did a great job, so thanks for the staff. I just wanted to talk a little bit about Rule 24, being I've, uh, I am uh, an alternate member representing NSEA on the Nebraska Council on Teacher Education, and 
and usually serve on a number of the ad hoc committees because it's difficult to get our teachers out of what they do every day, which is work with our children and, and help educate them. Uh, and so I represent uh, them on some of the ad hocs and I was, I don't know if it was lucky enough to serve or privileged to serve on uh, the Rule 24 Ad Hoc Committee on the Middle School uh, Endorsement. And I remember, and I go back in my history, when we first adopted middle school endorsements and we came up with some flexibility because that was kind of the first uh, you know, start with middle school philosophy and how we were going to endorse people. So we were trying to get elementary people prepared uh, to work with middle school, whatever that configuration was in school districts, and also working with people who were endorsed 712 or 912 or whatever their content area was in the high school or junior high level. Uh, I, I date myself because I also used to drive my Chevy to the levee. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, was it dry? <laughs> yeah, it was dry. Well, it was on the Missouri River banks, and now they won't let you on those levees because they have holes in them as we found out. But uh, I, I think what the ad hoc committee came up with in, in the Nebraska Council on Teacher Ed is something that will be useful for us as we work with uh, our middle school aged people in the content areas because we need to focus really on that content. Our, our standards are requiring much more of our students uh, at an earlier and earlier age. And so now we're looking at how we can prepare people uh, to educate the middle school kids and, and have a good foundation in uh, the content that they're teaching, but yet still be flexible in the school districts, knowing that some districts have four, five, six, some have four, five, some have five, six, seven, some go up to ninth grade in their middle schools. And so it's, it's difficult and part of those configurations are based upon facilities, not philosophy or, or where our teachers are. And, and so it's important that we have people prepared to work and, and uh, teach students to the standards that you have all set. So I'm very pleased with the discussions we had. It didn't take as long uh, to do middle school endorsements as it did some of our special ed. But uh, uh, the thing that I'll assure you is the people that are involved in those ad hocs and then on NCTE definitely study the issues. And so we were looking at that flexibility in the content. And I think we have you know, have a good proposal for you. So I urge you to adopt uh, 11 and 12 and uh, have a good day. And we'll see you later. Thanks, Jake. Uh, next, we're going to move on into our action items. Uh, and in our action items, uh, item 5 is um, um, state legislation and board actions on legislative issues and we did take action yesterday so I do not believe there's any other uh, actions that we'll be taking at this time from the committee is that correct that is correct thank you very much for doing that yesterday to expedite the process all right um, next we'll move on to item six and that's adopt the proposed revised rule is there a motion for item six I moved uh, the adoption of proposed revised rule 192 NEC1 rules and regulations governing the audit of Nebraska public school districts. Second. So we have a motion and a second for the proposed revised rule 1. Is there any discussion, questions, or comments? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patricia Tim, Molly O'Halloran? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Next, we'll move on to item seven, and that's adopt the proposed revised rule two. Is there a motion uh, relative to item seven? <coughs> So we have a motion and second. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Molly O'Halloran? Yes. Patricia Tim, Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Seven yes, one absent.
All right, moving on to item eight, adopt the proposed repeal of rule 12. Is there a motion? I move that we adopt the proposed repeal of rule 12, regulations and procedures for exempting schools for which parents elect not to meet legal requirements <laughs> for school approval and accreditation for other than religious reasons. I second it. We have a motion and second to repeal rule 12. Any discussion, <clears throat> comments? Hearing none. Denise, please call the roll. John Witzel? Yes. Molly O'Halloran? Yes. Patricia Tam? Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Next, we'll move on to item nine, adopt the proposed revised rule 13. Is there a motion? <laughs> well, I would move that we adopt the proposed revised Rule 13 regulations <laughs> and procedures for exempting schools for which parents elect not to meet legal requirements for school approval and accreditation. Second. So we have a motion and a second uh, to um, adopt the revised Rule 13. Any comments? Discussion? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Glenn Flint? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patricia Tim? Molly O'Halloran? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Moving on to item 10, uh, to adopt the proposed revised rule 83. Is there a motion? John? I'll make the motion we adopt proposed revisions to 24 regulations for certificate endorsements. When yeah, 7 rule 10. 83. 7.10. Oh, 7.10? Yeah, 7.10. Oh, yeah. Just move down here. Move. Thanks. Same <laughs> <laughs> Adopt the proposed revised rule 83 procedures of the state committee to the reorganization of school districts. Second. Sorry for the faux pas. That's all right. So we have a motion in the second. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, yeah. Denise, please call the roll. Lily Larson? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Molly O'Halloran? Yes. Patricia Tim? Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Thank you, Bryce, for joining us this morning. <laughs> we appreciate it. Have a great day. Moving on to item 11, uh, adopt proposed revisions to Rule 24. I make the motion to approve uh, proposed uh, revisions to 24 regulations for certificate endorsements. Second. So we have a motion and a second to adopt the proposed revisions to Rule 24. Is there any discussion or comments? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Rachel Wise? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patricia Tim? Molly O'Halloran? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Moving on to item 12, approve the guidelines. Is there a motion? Okay. I move approval of the guidelines recommended for the use of the Rule 24 endorsements. Second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the guidelines for Rule 24. Is there any questions or comments? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Molly O'Halloran? Yes. Patricia Tim? Maureen Nichols? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Moving on to item 13, and that's to authorize the commissioner to negotiate the contract with uh, ERSI. I move we authorize the commissioner to negotiate and enter into a contract up to the amount of $50,280 with the Environment Rating Scales Institute. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Molly O'Halloran? Yes. Patricia Tim? Seven yes, one absent. Moving on to item 14. Uh, grant the Commission authority to approve a contract with M-Space. Is there a motion? 
Madam President, uh, I move that we grant the commissioner the authority to approve a contract with M Space for community engagement services to provide information about step up to quality. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Molly O'Halloran? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patricia Tim? Seven yes, one absent. Next, we move on to item 15, and that's approve the vocational rehabilitation plan. Is there a motion? Maureen? Yes, Madam President. I move to approve the adult education and literacy, literacy portion of the Workforce Innovation we're on and Opportunity. 15, 15, 15, sorry. We're on 15. Oh. Yeah. I'm ahead. <laughs> you are. But we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Dyslexia, perhaps. <laughs> approve the vocational. I move to approve the vocational rehabilitation portion of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act combined state plan. <coughs> so we have a motion and a second to approve the um, WIOA. <laughs> plan is there any discussion or comments hearing none Denise please call the roll John Witzel yes Molly O'Halloran yes. Patricia Tim Maureen Nichols yes Patrick McPherson yes Rachel Wise yes Lily Larson yes Glenn Flint yes seven yes one absent now moving on to 16 to approve the adult education literacy portion <laughs> okay. okay. Well, Madam President, I move to approve the adult education and literacy portion of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act combined state plan. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any comments or discussion? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Glenn Flint? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Molly O'Holler? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Patricia Tim, Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Thank you, and thanks Mark and Vicki, and I forgot to thank Melody for being here, and Sharon and Pat, we're just moving along, so thank you. All right, moving on to item 17, grant the commission authority to approve the contract with ESU 9. Is there a motion? I yeah. move to grant the commissioner authority to approve the contract with ESU 9 for 2016-17. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any comments or discussion? Yes. Yes. Um, I have some questions for Dean Falkers. He's, he's here today. <laughs> <laughs> I won't make this difficult. <laughs> um, in approving this grant, as I, as I read the rationale, this is the only one of the ESUs that are doing this training on data and communication, correct? So actually the way that this works is that we, this is a mechanism to reimburse the ESUs for room rental, equipment rental, and it's all of the ESUs. And so what, what happens is that if we go to ESU 3, we go to ESU 13 and do a session, a work session, then they provide the expense to ESU 9 and they serve as the conduit for providing the contract with us for reimbursement. And so instead of us receiving 18 different invoices from 18 different places for different kinds of things, it's, it's, a, it's a mechanism really to use ESU 9 as the, as the center point of coordination among the reimbursement process. Okay. And so that's what it's intended to be. So it's all ESUs. <coughs> Not just the issue. Okay, no. that, that explains one thing. So on the accountability issue with it, if there are leftover monies at the end of the budget year, is that reimbursed then to the state? So the way it works, it's actually <coughs> based upon expenses. So we budget 50000 and so it's up to that amount. Um, I think last year it was close to 9000 that we actually spent. And so that other 41000 is remains in... Um, the, the, the coffers for the federal programs and for um, the SLDS grant to utilize, be utilized mm -hmm. for other kinds of training and support. Yeah. Can, I, can I just ask, add a point of clarification? What I think I heard Dean say, we don't even reimburse ESU 9 unless they incur the expense. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's what yeah. I was going to no, ask next. Expenses. So until yeah. they send right. the memo, we don't disperse any funds. Right. Okay. Exactly. It's just authorization up to that amount. And, 
at the peak about three years ago, it was close to that amount as far as the number of trainings. But over time, that has gone down. But we sort of maintain the opportunity for this relationship because of the efficiencies that are gained from it. I appreciate the information. Thank you. No problem. Molly? <coughs> Maureen and I were discussing this <coughs> earlier this this morning. Last year you said you used $9,000? I believe that was the most current piece that we had um, as of December. That was the amount that we had reimbursed for last year's contract. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes right at the end as we close it out, that's when some of the, the catch-up occurs. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a, a question that is always on the back of my mind. As you develop this dashboard, the issues are going to become more and more important to mm -hmm. coordinate our activities. Will this be the same funding stream for professional development of our uh, teachers and, and mm. professionals to use your dashboard effectively? So it's a great question. Um, mm. The short answer is, is right now, no. Mm -hmm. um, what, what we're, um, this, the resources in this contract is, have really been earmarked for those kind of pieces where we go in and insert ourselves and put mm -hmm. on a work day for data collection mm -hmm. because it's NDE focused. Yeah. And so the relationship and the work that we've been doing with the advisor implementation mm -hmm. is really creating a partnership piece where it's NDE ESUs and districts all working together. Yeah. And in those particular settings and situations where we go and we do trainings, we do um, requirements gathering, mm -hmm. all the different kinds of things that are associated with it, it's more mm -hmm. of a partnership mm -hmm. and that doesn't require um, this reimbursement piece because it's not something we're inserting on them as opposed to a service that we're partnering to achieve together. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just, I know that we had a big financial request that wasn't, uh, I guess, uh, budgeted in involving technology. So I'm always concerned about how we can get you a sustainable um, budget to do what we need to do if we're going to actually make data more efficient at, in the classroom for the teachers. So I just was thinking about if yes. you didn't didn't use 41,000, maybe some of that could be used for the professional training for mm -hmm. the advisor. No, absolutely. Really? Uh, I agree with Molly in terms of the professional training because what we do know from AQUEST, that's one of the areas in which school districts do need the assistance and they want it. They want to be up to speed. Uh, secondly, when we do the focus groups out across the state and ask their opinion about uh, revisions, updating of standards or the like, is the cost of using the ESUs, does this include that? Because we know that we want input from across the state. So using it, since we seem to have the funds, the more times that we ask and have hold these focus groups seems to me to be worthwhile. No, you're absolutely correct. And that's, that's another example of what would be in that particular use case as far as the, right. the, the funds, because it would be something that NDE is going out and using their facilities to achieve our work right. um, and so that's where the reimbursement piece comes in and so whether it's the standards work or whether it's the data work all of that fits under this piece of that puzzle thank you Are there, um, Maureen and then Commissioner another question no problem so <clears throat> as as we move down this road with a quest and we're looking at 84 additional school districts in the needs improvement do you see some of this money that's been tailored for data and communication because it's all about data and understanding the data in these districts as to where we go uh, do you foresee the 9,000 going back up to closer to that 50,000 or will they be uh, higher attendance at like the statewide conference that uh, you put on so it's a great, it's a great question. It's sort of um, a question that anticipates this crystal ball that you look into and, and estimate. But um, what what we have is a convergence, really, of a number of things that are happening. So we have what historically has been this pot of resources that helped offset the costs for what I would call is not necessarily significant training, but more about creating spaces or or a work environment to do data submissions and to understand the data quality pieces associated with the submission process or in the case of gathering information around standards that kind of thing so it's it was sort of that's the space 
we have this new piece with the advisor and as we continue to create and develop our relationships with the ESUs and the districts in the implementation of that it's really kind of changing the paradigm of what's happening um, with with regard to how we're collecting data and how we're ultimately able to use data in ways that is safe and secure we also have this other orb if you will or of work that's converging and that's around building the capacity of the educators to use data effectively in the context of the continuous improvement process. And that's the piece that I think most closely aligns to the, the power and passion around AQUEST mm -hmm. and the things that are happening there. And, and so the, the data cadre work, the, the work that has been around train the trainers and building the capacity and the understanding around the data literacies um, for our educators to better understand that We've really been thoughtful and strategic about how we engage districts in the training, how we engage ESUs and helping support that and sustain that, and infusing essentially then these other tools of the collection and these, the, the resources that allow that data to be used on a daily basis by the teachers to help improve teaching and learning. So, so all of that sort of coming together in a convergence, and, and as a part of that, then it'll be important for us to do um, a very strategic, thoughtful way of budgeting and thinking about those costs and expenses as they relate to each and every one of those pieces. Well, I want to thank you, Dean, for, I, I think this conversation has been great this morning because even yesterday had you been here, I, I wouldn't have been thinking of those questions. So I appreciate the opportunity to have this morning to be able to have this conversation. No problem. Thank you. Commissioner, did you? He covered what I was he, Okay, it's covered. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. <clears throat> Rachel Wise. Yes. Lily Larson. Yes. Glenn Flint. Yes. John Whistle. Yes. Molly O'Halloran. Yes. Patricia Tim. Maureen Nichols. Yes. Patrick McPherson. Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Thank you, Dean, for joining us this morning. Thank you, yes. And I apologize for the confusion yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Let's move on to item eight. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Question, uh, and I apologize. We didn't get a chance to really talk about a couple items yesterday. Uh, I'm curious on 8.5 and 8.6, are, the, are, the, if we're gonna, are we treating those as part of the con consent agenda approval? Uh, I'd really like to have a little discussion about those two items. Um, all right. So right now we have a motion and a second. Let's move to which one would you prefer to discuss first? 8-5. Uh, okay. And Let's move to 8-5. Yeah, and maybe the commissioner can a answer this. I'm, I'm a little confused. It says that the legislature didn't appropriate $400,000. And then it says we put out a RFP for $400,000. Um, and it looks like this is a continuation of something we've done in the past, and I'm wondering if we've had any kind of evaluation of how this four hundred thousand dollars is being spent. You know, is you know, I just that bothers me without knowing a little bit more. Yeah, and so we're gonna get grab Melanie just to. She's this is, right here. She's coming. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and I think it says that the, that the legislature did appropriate that. Is that I, I misunderstood what you said. On the, uh, yeah, join us. We are on Can item 8.5 on the consent agenda. Okay. Um, um, I'm Melody Hobson, um, administrator of the Office of Early Childhood, and that is the, what the, um, Urging Healthy Behaviors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, the, uh, the legislature appropriated $400,000 per year within their budget a couple of years ago. Um, there was no administrative. Um, amount with that. So the idea was NDE would um, do an RFP, which we did a uh, year and a half ago now, um, and um, it was designed to be a statewide effort, and we had two applications. One of them was not a statewide effort. It did not fit the criteria. The other one was um, Nebraska Children and Families um, Foundation. They, it, this money um, did early childhood uh, behavioral health, 
Um, it is putting the teaching pyramid, which is what we support in, in school district early childhood classrooms, um, into community child care programs to help children um, with, well, first of all, to, to, to de-escalate behaviors, to teach appropriate skills, to help children learn appropriate behavior, to help um, children be and to support themselves and then to work with families as well. Mm -hmm. There are some other things that they do. With it, This is a multi-tiered model. So the bottom is preparing the workforce, which uh, Nebraska Children and Families does. They also um, have a cadre of coaches that we also work with them so that um, everybody has the appropriate training. They pay for the coaches for nurturing healthy behaviors. Um, the, there is um, a pretty sophisticated, a multi-level um, application that they have for communities who, uh, so, so this is not them going into a, to a child care program just randomly and saying, here, you want to do this. The, the communities have to come together. They have to um, decide, you know, where, you know, who in this community is interested in doing it. Um, they have a number of child care providers in Crete. Um, they have some in the South Sioux area. They have some, I think, in Dawson County as well. So they do it kind of by community so that, you know, children have, you know, wherever they are as much as possible, they can be a part of something very positive. Um, with a, so they work with the child care providers. Then they also, part of that is to teach. There's a, there is, um, you know, teaching children, you know, how to, um, how to handle their feelings, how to, you know, rea you know, it's very, very, um, it's it's very intentional about teaching children how to, you know, take themselves out of the moment. You know, help them to, you know, engage their executive function skills, um, de-escalate behavior, and teach appropriate behavior. And then there are children who would need some additional services. So this helps the staff do like behavior plans. And then at the very top of the pyramid, what we call it, are children who really do need some um, significant behavioral health. And there is also money within that, um, within this grant, that, that they can access um, you know, counselors who, you know, psychologists who have the appropriate background for, for early childhood. Um, at this point, with any of the of, of the communities that they've worked with, they've not had to access that high level. It, it has been successful within the lower levels of the, of the pyramid. Um, this money here is to continue what they're doing for you know the next year, um, because it doesn't make any sense for us to go out and, and do another RP, get a different provider, um, to start over something completely different. This helps continue what they're doing for another year and then add some, some new communities. Mm -hmm. They are working on, kind of on a five-year timetable. They also have some private money that they're adding to this um, they, because it, th there is turnover in child care providers, more so than we see in schools. But it, it is a program-wide model, a lot like our positive behavior sports in school districts are. You don't just pick, you know, okay, one teacher's going to do this and everything's fine. You really have to have the buy-in of, the, um, of, the, admi of the, the director and enough staff to, to really do this successfully. So can, so I, get, can I ask one quick, because I think what I heard, Patrick also asked about evaluation. Is there a yes. way well, to well, evaluate? Yeah, I appreciate hearing about Sorry, that, okay. but, you know, do we have any, uh, you know, I, I think when you're turning around and spending $400,000 and continuing a contract, yes. I'd like to know how many people yes. we have served. I'd like to know that, you know, there, would, there's some, some evaluation of the program that says it's successful. I, that's a very good point, and I will be happy to get that for you because, yes, there is an evaluation. And um, I did not add this with the support materials. I didn't, I guess I just didn't really think about it, but I will be happy to get that for all the board members. Yeah, I just know. I just feel yeah. uncomfortable. We're, I mean, we're we're, yeah. we're spending four hundred thousand dollars on on a, on a program that That's I'm sitting here. We just we just had a contract that we talked about yesterday that we renewed, and all of a sudden it's a disaster. And I'd like to know that there's some reason to say these people are doing the yes. job. They they weren't having their contract extended without another you know request right. for bid, and that 
they're actually doing something. Yes, and and and, and mm -hmm. that's absolutely. Um, I will be happy to get you that because yeah, it is very important. We don't want to be throwing money year after year into something that we don't think is working. Does this have okay. to be approved today? Uh, uh, right now, we do have a motion on the table in a second. Um, so I mean, I just to prove the consent. Right. Agenda. So to prove the consent agenda, and this is in. So we would first need, I think, we could do a friendly amendment to pull this out of the consent agenda. Um, I'm, Madam President, uh, I moved a friendly amendment to the previous motion for the overall approval of the consent agenda and that that... We just need a friendly amendment to pull 8.5 out. And that's sufficient. And was there another okay. one? That you uh, eight six. Eight six. So pull a friendly amendment to pull eight point five and eight point six out. That's fine. As a oh, did you who seconded? I can't remember. Yeah. And you're okay with that? Okay. So let's do this piece okay. real quick, okay? okay? So now we hit, still have the motion on the table uh, to approve the consent agenda, and those two items are pulled out. Mm -hmm and uh, the second. So is there any discussion about the consent agenda? Those two items are pulled out and we'll come back to those two items. Any discussion? Hearing none, Denise, please call roll on the approval of the consent agenda with the exception of items 8.5 and 8.6. Molly O'Halloran? Yes. Patricia Tim, Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Lily Larson? Mm -hmm. Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. And Molly O'Halloran, did I say? Yes. yes. Okay. Seven yes, one absent. All right. Okay. So thank you. And now just a second, we're going to okay. stop because typically with the consent agenda, we try to pull the items out for discussion, but we'll figure this out. Do so Commissioner had Commissioner had a few comments yes. and then we'll get back to yeah, it. So just procedurally, and I'm, so remember that the pink slips that we actually have are yes, to pull those. Yes, so I understand I that. No, so I appreciate yeah. it, so we're at that point, but just as a reminder, that gives us a chance to actually get the right staff here and organize for questions that we might have, so, so thanks. Okay, so now we're back to 8.5. Um, we're having some discussion about 8.5. There is not a motion on the table at the moment about 8.5. First, is there any additional information or is there a motion that can someone I, yeah. wants to make? Well, well, can I ask a question? Would you, would it be helpful if I went and got copies of their evaluation report for you to look at? Would you, would you, would you like the month to look at it or would you like to, to look at it today? I, I, my, my, my concern is do we have to approve it today? I, can we, we wait I till next we can, month? I think we can push it back. I, I would okay. move that we def defer okay. the, uh, well, that we table, sure. table the, uh, this item until the next meet, next board meeting in March. Okay, all right. We have a motion. In a, somebody a second. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second to table uh, item eight point five until March. Any discussion on tabling? Yes. Well, Molly. Yes. Um, I would like you and your research if this passes. It's a little confusing because the legislature appropriated 400000 within the state budget. Mm -hmm. So that has been dedicated to um, this Nurturing Healthy Behaviors program. Are we talking about an additional 400000 right now? Because it's, it's, uh, the it's way it's in, written, it it's says in, it's no funding was appropriated to administer local grants. Okay. It was $400,000 annually was put in the budget. Okay. So that $400,000 goes directly to the entity that is administering this for local programs. So we don't have the we don't ha we don't have we don't have the the money or the the capacity within NDE to 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 monitor this and to do this mm -hmm. for like six programs. We we monitor the grant. Okay. So that's, I mean, that, that, I mean, that's not our area of expertise. But this is the clarification. So Nebraska Children and Families Foundation. It comes to NDE, and then we were responsible for doing an RFP for an appropriate statewide provider. And they are the statewide, they are the statewide provider. provider. I, before uh, we take, before we vote yeah, on tab so, tabling this. So I'm just a little point of clarification. I don't believe that there's a uh, discussion 
beyond the margin of the table. table. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's, that is, that is correct. You're supposed yeah, that to not correct. discuss yeah. that. So. That is correct. Thank you. Thank okay. you. So we have a motion and a second to table the item. Denise, please call the roll. Thank you. Patrick McPherson? Aye. Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patricia Tim, Molly O'Halloran? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Rachel Weiss? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Thank you. And, and I'll just make it, we'll, we'll come back with some of that information for next month on right. this issue. What I would, what I just would add that the, the um, also we have to follow whatever the legislature says. So I'd ask, I'd ask Pelley to bring that information forward so we're complying with the law. So. And yeah. I'll just request right. that we not have this on the consent agenda. Let's put it yes. on the regular so we'll agenda that. and that'll give us an opportunity to have a greater discussion at that time. If you have additional questions, touch base with the commissioner uh, on what those questions would be and what additional information you would want uh, per our policy on gathering information. So thank you, Okay, Melody. now the contract, was it my contract or one of the uh, other Well, ones? we'll now move to okay. the discussion on 8.6. Actually, we, three the three items uh, on 8.6. And, and my question there was simply, uh, we're, we're allocating $45,890 there. And, and I probably could have got this answered separately had I put in a pink slip, but uh, I'm just curious, what is the state, uh, the, the Department of Education actually spending on this? Uh, do we know? Of their dollars beyond this 45,000? Which, is that? Uh, Heather Gill. Is that the 8.6A? Yeah, which, A, B, or C? Um, this is the one to conduct, uh, to uh, grant the commissioner the authority to continue to con contract with NCSA, okay. Nebraska oh, Council eight, School Administrators. B. Yeah. B. So actually what that one is, is when we run a conference, there's conference fees and other things. So NCSA kind of organizes the conference and then it's, again, they get the, the amount, um, the amount of money that goes into that is actually part of that process to make sure that they can run that contract. And that's actually a mix of different partners that come together to accomplish that, mm -hmm. that conference overall. And so they just help manage the conference. We do that with NCSA on other things too. In fact, I kinda, kinda like our conversation with ESU9, they're helping us run some con different events, making sure they're handling the, the contract. So that's yeah. the purposes of that one. I, that kind of answers my question yeah again it'd be interesting you know I know that some folks attended that and were, were, were very happy with it but I think it'd be nice to have some kind of documentation as to how many people attended okay. and so forth uh, on these sort of things in the future I'm not trying to create problems today and I thought maybe we would have had a chance to discuss a couple of these issues at yesterday's meeting, and that's the reason I, I didn't have the time to fill out the pink okay. slip. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. If you're, uh, well. oh, I sorry. think it's important to note that it's for assistance in conducting the Hispanic Latino summits. Yes. Yeah. Any other comments or questions regarding 8.6 or? Commissioner, with, do, you with, do you have some staff here that could probably address? Some I, of I'm happy with the response. With that, I'd, I'd move for approval of the item. Okay. Of just the, or, I, of, of the, the entire. Yeah. Of all of the I'm sorry, I don't have the wording in front That's, of me. Okay. We have a motion to yeah. approve the on the consent agenda item 8.6. Is there a second? second? So we have a motion to second. Any additional discussion? I do want to point out. I think the discussion has been good, um, and maybe a an added piece that getting some background documentation in our consent agenda on um, items that maybe have outcomes associated with an evaluation, uh, that, that actually informs us and gives all of us a little bit of deeper understanding of some of the different uh, processes and projects that the department's involved in. Any could other I, comments? Could or I add or Michelle? ask you to do this? Because we could take up the, there's actually three items underneath 8.6. Yeah. So if you would clarify that it's 8.6 A, B, and, and C, C, if that's appropriate, and then Friendly you know, we, we can handle that one yes. motion. Um, the second? Yes. That, okay. All right. So it is 8.6 A, B, and C. If there's no other discussion or comments, then Denise, please call the roll. I did not get who seconded that. Molly. Molly. 
Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. Patricia Tim? Molly O'Halloran? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on, and thanks to, thank you, thank you. you the folks who came in. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> moving on, uh, we have no special pre presentations today with item nine, so we'll move on to item 10. In item 10, there is an updated, and I believe it's in your documents, an updated meeting participation document um, that uh, several, uh, I think, um, going to that um, there's one correction in your document it shouldn't be me going to the Nebraska Regional Braille challenge that is Maureen made that request uh, but I did not make that request so um, any discussion or questions about the Ten travel button. request it's there um, I this we just received this yesterday and the, it's required to have a RSVP by February 29th we won't have a meeting before that date so I wonder if it would be appropriate to see um, how many people are interested to going to the Nebraska State Education Association legislative dinner okay so we have got Maureen Glenn um, John, Molly, Lily, and I believe the date of that is March it's March 7th, 7th. Yeah. Monday. and in Rachel. Lincoln. In Lincoln. Okay, so we will add that to the list. Uh, Maureen, Glenn, John, Molly, Lily, and Rachel to attend the NSCA Legislative Dinner. Maureen? I suggest you check with Pat to see if she would be no, interested no. since she's um, absent. Uh, let's put... Let's approve Pat. We'll put Pat in the list. Thank you. And then if she doesn't go, we'll modify that. Any other changes to the requests? Thank you, Molly. Is there a motion to approve the request? I move approval of the travel request. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Discussion, Pat, yes. Please. Um, once again, for the record, I want to say that. Uh, uh, this board needs a travel expense policy that among other things defines appropriate functions that board members may attend at NDE expense that defines or limits amounts that the board members may expend on annual on an annual basis that defines appropriate levels of reimbursement for meals mileage lodging registration etc that defines the difference between board functions that are reimbursable by the state and constituent and non-official functions that should be paid for by the member personally or by his or her campaign account. It's same as last month for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Any other comments or questions? I just want to make one comment. I really believe it's a, it, this board has been very vibrant about um, listening to our partners, whether it's Nebraska State Education Association, the Nebraska Association of School Boards, Nebraska Council of School Administrators, NERCSA, the Rural Schools, uh, ESU Coordinating Council. Um, I don't think if, if someone in that group has a party and says, do you want to come, we're just going to have a social, that isn't a school board function. I would expect all of us to pay our own way. But if actually it's a legislative dinner and they're going to be speakers from the legislature talking about education, that is um, a function <laughs> where our partners we can listen to. And for me, I live in North Platte, I don't have a face-to-face -face conversation to le with legislatures or with our partners on the, Nebra no, the Teachers Association um, in a specific reason to get together. So I would just ask the policy committee to please make sure that, I think Pat's, Pat's concept is good. I don't think social events that are purely social should be reimbursed, but if you're there to get an education and professional development and you make an effort to attend, I do think it should be reimbursable. But thank you for putting that back to the policy committee. <laughs> and, and I am now on the policy committee and intend to pursue that. And it may not be a pop, I may not be, I may not prevail but I want to say that, you know, our legislatures 
the 49 senators that we sent to Lincoln have a great deal of responsibility in attending meetings across the state also. They're limited to $2,500 a year in outstate travel expense. Our regents have a great number of events that they have to travel to and go to across the state. They're limited to $2,500 a year. We spent on an average of $8,000 per member last year in travel expenses, and I think that's outrageous. And I think also, and I haven't looked at it, but I believe that we're, 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 we are possibly charging the board or our, the department for things that should not be charged. If I go to a first five meeting in Lincoln, I don't believe that that's related. I, that, that should come out of my own personal campaign funds or I should pay for that mileage myself. I believe there are a lot of those functions that we need to be looking at and that we need to define. And, and you, can, you can say that we've got an obligation to, to learn as much as possible, but our legislators have that obligation. Our regents have that obligation. You know, I don't want to make this something that, I, that you have to be rich to, to be part of this board. But by the same token, we take on some of these responsibilities knowing what they are, and we should be willing to either, you know, as, uh, uh, adhere to a, to a policy that defines everything that we do as far as re reimbursement and travel, you know, expenses, or we ought to be able to pay for that out of our personal pocket or out of our campaign expenses. That's or our campaign accounts. That's what this is about in my mind. And frankly, I, I think that if the NADC were to come in and audit some of our travel expenses, we might be embarrassed. So thank you very much. Any other comments or discussion? The Policy Committee started our discussion. We'll continue our discussion at the Policy Committee. And really we'll find uh, and define, I think, clarity between reimbursement for board meetings uh, and define the difference between reimbursement for board meetings and expenses as it relates to professional development and continuing education. We do have policies that address both of those issues and we'll review both of those policies. We will be looking at um, comparing and understanding in depth uh, the policies of others in the state as well as outside of the state. So any other comments, questions? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. <clears throat> Rachel Weiss? Yes. And Lily Larson? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Patrick McPherson? No. Maureen Nichols? Yes. Molly O'Halloran? Yes. Patricia Tim? Six yes, one no, one absent. All right, we are going to take a five minute break because um, I don't think Leslie is here yet. And the, um, since the hearings were uh, publicized to be at 10, the, uh, we need to have them at 10 or within a few minutes of 10. So uh, let's take about a five, short, short, five, five minute uh, yeah. break. Um, I think five. Pat has given me now a definition for short break <laughs> and short, short break. <laughs> And so this is the short, short break. So let's take about five minutes and then we will move back to our item of the hearings. Thank you.
doesn't know what short short means. <laughs> no, you'll have to help him, Pat, on that. And we missed our short short and almost became. Uh, so we're moving to item five and we'll <coughs> move first to item 5.1 uh, the state board of education is prepared to consider the disposition of case number 15-18 commissioner versus heather gates the board has been provided with the record of the nebraska professional practices commission's proceedings containing the findings of fact conclusions of law and recommendation of the commission all of the pleadings exhibits and a written transcript of the nppc hearing are marked by the state board as exhibit one the notice of disposition is received into evidence as Exhibit 2. If there is no objection, these will be received. We will first hear from a representative of the NPPC, then the petitioner, and finally a representative of the respondent. Each representative will be given 10 minutes to present his or her statements. The board will now receive any addition, will not receive any additional evidence or testimony beyond that contained in Exhibits 1 and 2. Will the representative of the Professional Practices Commission please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself. Good morning. Good morning. Kathy Vons representing the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission on the matter of Matthew Bloomstead versus <coughs> Heather Gates. The commission found that the respondent pursuant to a plea agreement was found guilty by the Madison County District Court of possession of a controlled substance, hydrocodone, a class four felony. And the court deferred sentencing to allow the respondent the opportunity to enter into and complete the Northeast Nebraska Adult Felony Drug Court Program. The Commission deliberated on the facts before it and recommends to the State Board of Education that the respondent's certificate be revoked for a period of three years. Does any board member have any questions of the clerk? Okay. Thank you. Will the petitioner please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself? <clears throat> Good morning. You're used to seeing Brian, but I'm Scott Summers, uh, attorney with the legal counsel's office here in the department, uh, 301 Centennial Mall South, 6th floor, Lincoln, here on behalf of the petitioner, the commissioner, and uh, you have the record before you. You've uh, heard the clerk speak, so I won't uh, be redundant on that, other than to say, as you've heard Brian speak before on these matters, that. Uh, uh, the PPC here is recommending a three-year revocation with reinstatement contingent upon the respondent's successful completion of the drug court requirements, and <coughs> the commissioner is in support of that recommendation. I'd be happy to answer any Do questions, although I wasn't part of the hearing <laughs> that Brian was. Does any board member have any questions of the petitioner? Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Will the respondent please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself? The record will reflect that the respondent did not appear. <clears throat> this proceeding is now closed. The board will make a determination in this matter at a later time. We'll move on to the State Board of Education is prepared to consider the disposition of case number 15-19, Commissioner versus Gabriel Early. The board has been provided with the record of the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission's proceedings containing the findings of fact, conclusions of law, and recommendation of the commission all of the pleadings, exhibits, and a written transcript of the NPPC hearing are marked by the State Board as Exhibit 1. The notice of disposition is received into evidence as Exhibit 2. If there is no objection, these will be received. We will first hear from a representative of the NPPC, then the petitioner, and finally a representative of the respondent. <clears throat> Each rem representative will be given 10 minutes to present his or her statements. The board will not receive any additional evidence or testimony beyond that contained in Exhibits 1 and 2. 
Will the representative of the Professional Practices Commission please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself. <clears throat> Again, Kathy Bunce representing the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission on the matter of Matthew Bloomstead versus Gabriel Early. The commission found that the respondent used a school district computer to access sexually explicit material. The commission deliberated on the facts before <coughs> it and recommends to the State Board of Education <coughs> that the respondent's certificate be revoked for a period of two years. Does any board member have any questions of the clerk? Will the petitioner, thank you. Will the petitioner please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself? Hello again, Scott Summers, attorney with the General Counsel's Office, Nebraska Department of Education in Lincoln. Here on the matter of Mr. Early, again, you have <coughs> the record of the PPC before you and heard the clerk, Ms. Vaughn's uh, summary of that. And the commissioner, as the uh, petitioner in the matter, is supportive of the two-year revocation uh, recommendation from the PPC and it is entirely consistent with prior cases with similar facts. Mm -hmm. I would be happy to try and answer any questions. Does any board member have any questions of the petitioner? Thank you. Scott? Will the respondent please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself? The record will reflect that the respondent did not appear. This proceeding is now closed. The board will make a determination in this matter at a later time. Moving on, the State Board of Education is prepared to consider the disposition of case number 15-20, Commissioner versus Justin Danley. The board has been provided with the record of the Nebraska, Nebraska Professional Practices Commission's proceedings containing the findings of fact, conclusions of law, and recommendation of the commission. All of the pleadings, exhibits, and a written transcript of the MPPC hearing are marked by the State Board as Exhibit 1. The notice of disposition is received into evidence as Exhibit 2. If there is no objection, these will be received. We will first hear from a representative of the MPPC, then the petitioner, and finally a res representative of the respondent. Each representative will be given 10 minutes to present his or her statements. The board will not receive any additional evidence or testimony beyond that contained in Exhibits 1 and 2. Will the representative of the Professional Practices Commission please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself. Again, for the record, Kathy Bunce representing the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission on the matter of Matthew Bloomstead versus Justin Danley. The commission found that the respondent in the summer of 2014 engaged in a sexual relationship with a female former student <coughs> who had graduated in May of the same year and pursuant to a plea agreement, entered a plea of no contest and was found guilty of procuring alcohol for a minor. The respondent was sentenced to 366 days in jail. The commission deliberated on the facts before it and recommends to the State Board of Education that his certificate be revoked for a period of five years. Does any board member have any questions of the <coughs> clerk? Hearing none, thank you. Will the petitioner please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself? Again, Scott Summers, attorney with the General Counsel's Office here in the Nebraska Department of Education for the commissioner, petitioner in this matter regarding Mr. Danley. Again, you have the record and you've heard from Ms. Vance regarding the uh, facts of the matter. I might add uh, that the uh, uh, student at issue was a uh, former student whom the um, respondent had been a coach of, as I understand the facts from the record and the commissioner is supportive of the PPC recommending the uh, five-year revocation. Does any board member have any questions of the petitioner? Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Will the, resp will the respondent please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself? The record will reflect that the respondent did not appear. This proceeding is now closed. The board will make a determination in this matter at a later time. Moving on, the State Board of Education is prepared to consider the disposition of case number 15-21, Commissioner versus Ramona Hort. The board has been <clears throat> provided with the record of the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission's proceedings containing the findings of fact, conclusion of law, and recommendation of the commission. All of these pleadings, exhibits, and a written transcript of the MPPC hearing are marked by the State Board as Exhibit 1. The notice of disposition is received into evidence as Exhibit 2. If there is no objection, these will be received. <clears throat> we will first hear from a representative of the MPPC, then the petitioner, and finally a representative of the respondent. 
Each representative will be given 10 minutes to present his or her statements. The board will not receive any additional evidence or testimony beyond that contained in Exhibits 1 and 2. Will the representative of the Professional Practices Commission please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself. Once more, Kathy Vons representing the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission on the matter of Matthew Bloomstead versus Ramona Hort. The commission found that the respondent took pictures of students' computer <coughs> screens which contained secured test materials, examined and discussed student responses to items, provided answers to students, <coughs> and arranged places where students could discuss test items. The commission deliberated on the facts before it and recommends to the State Board of Education that the respondent's certificate be suspended for a period of one year. Does any board member have any questions of the clerk? Thank you, Kathy. Will the petitioner please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself? Thank you. Once again, Scott Summers, attorney with the General Counsel's Office here at the Nebraska Department of Education in Lincoln on behalf of the commissioner as the uh, um, petitioner in this matter of Ms. Hort. Again, you've heard uh, Ms. Vons as the clerk of the PPC uh, outline the basic facts, which are also in the record before you of the PPC. Uh, the test she was referring to, uh, as you probably read, was, the, was a 2015 NISA writing assessment. The commissioner is supportive of the one-year suspension recommendation. This is a suspension where it comes back to life, so to speak, after the one-year period, as opposed to having to re uh, apply or for the certificate. He is supportive of the one-year suspension, leaving it consistent with at least a recent case in 2014 where this board suspended the certificate for one year of another educator regarding alleged NISA test improprieties. If uh, you have any questions, again, I'll try to help answer those. Does any board member have any questions of the petitioner? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Will the respondent please come forward, be seated, and identify yourself? The record will reflect that the respondent did not appear. <clears throat> this proceeding is now closed. The board will make a determination in this matter at a later date. Is there a motion to go into executive session? Madam President, I move that the State Board go into executive session to deliberate and receive advice from League Council on contested cases and the pending petition filed under the Administrative Procedure Act. Second. So we have a motion and second. Any questions? Discussion? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Rachel Wise. <coughs> yes. Lily Larson. Yes. Glenn Flint. Yes. John Witzel. Yes. Molly O'Halloran. Yes. Patricia Tim. Maureen Nichols. Yes. Patrick McPherson. Yes. Seven yes when absent. The State Board will now go into an executive session to deliberate and receive advice from legal counsel on contested cases and a pending petition filed under the Administrative Procedure Act.
Madam President, I move that the Nebraska State Board of Education resume their regularly scheduled meeting. I second. So we have a motion and a second to come out of the executive session and resume our regular meeting. Uh, is there any questions or comments? If not, Denise, please call the roll. Molly O'Halloran? Yes. Patricia Tim, Maureen Nichols? Yes. Patrick McPherson? Yes. John Witzel? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. All right, moving on to action item 7.1, consider the PPC's recommended decision in NDE case number 15-18, Commissioner versus Heather Gates. Do we have a motion? I move in Commissioner versus Heather Gates, NDE case number 15-18 that this board adopt the findings of fact, conclusions of law, and the recommendation of the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission, revoking respondents' teaching certificate for a period of three years and to adopt the final order proposed by legal counsel. Is there a second? Second. So we have a motion and second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Rachel Wise. Yes. Lily Larson. Yes. Glenn Flint. Yes. John Witzel. Yes. Molly O'Halloran. Yes. Patricia Tam. Maureen Nichols. Yes. Patrick McPherson. Yes. Seven yes, one absent. All right. Next, we're moving on to item 7.2. Consider the PPC's recommended decision in NDE case number 15-19, Commissioner versus Gabriel Early. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move in Commissioner versus Gabriel Early, NDE case number 15-19, that this board adopt the findings of fact conclusions of law and the recommendation of the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission revoking respondents teaching certificate for a period of two years and to adopt the final order proposed by legal counsel. I second. So we have a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Patrick McPherson. Aye. Maureen Nichols. Yes. Patricia Tim. Molly O'Halloran. Aye. John Witzel? Yes. Glenn Flint? Yes. Lily Larson? Yes. Rachel Wise? Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Moving on to item three, consider the PPC's recommended decision in NDE case number 15-20, Commissioner versus Justin Danley. Is there a motion? Madam President, I move in Commissioner versus Justin Danley, NDE case number 15-20, that this board adopt the findings of fact, conclusions of law, and the recommendation of the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission revoking respondents teaching certificate for a period of five years and to adopt the final order proposed by legal counsel. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Rachel Wise. Yes. Lily Larson. Yes. Glenn Four. Flint. Yes. John Witzel. Yes. Molly O'Halloran. Yes. Patricia Tim, Maureen Nichols. Yes. Patrick McPherson. Yes. Seven yes, one absent. Moving on to item four, consider the PPC's recommended decision in NDE case number 15-21, Commissioner versus Ramona Hort. Hort, is there a motion? Madam President, I move in Commissioner versus Ramona Hort, NDE case number 15-21, that this board adopt the findings of fact, conclusions of law, and the recommendation of the Nebraska Professional Practices Commission suspending respondents teaching certificate for one year and to adopt the final order proposed by legal counsel. Second. So we have a motion second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, Denise, please call the roll. Patrick McPherson. Yes. Maureen Nichols. Yes. Patricia Tim. Molly O'Halloran. Yes. John Witzel. Yes. Glenn Flint. Yes. Lily Larson. Yes. Rachel Wise. All right. Did you say yes? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Seven uh, yes. I did. <laughs> One absent. And I was saying goodbye to <laughs> Leslie goodbye. at the same time. Thank you, Leslie. Thanks. Thanks, Leslie. You're <laughs> Thank you. Got to say yes there, didn't I? Okay. I think we are ready to move on to item 11, which really is just the notification of our information items and written report. And then we move on to item 12 which would be adjournment. A work set, oh, yeah, a work session will be held, all of a sudden I thought, will be held on March, um, Thursday, March 3rd at 2 p.m. 
and a board meeting will be held on Friday, March 4th at 9 a.m. in this room. I do also want to add that we will send a notice out uh, that we may, uh, we are tentatively planning to have a retreat uh, around our strategic planning, uh, a vision session that would also be a public meeting and that would be on Thursday, March 3rd in the morning. But we will send out details and publish accordingly once those decisions are made. Okay, that's it, I think. Thanks, and everybody. Uh, yes, we have meetings and lunch, committee meetings, ad hoc meetings, strategic planning meetings.